Money doesn't grow on trees, but these buds are worth 100 euros per gram. This is medicinal cannabis. It contains high levels of cannabidol or CBD, a popular remedy against inflammation, pain and nausea. In 2017, Lesotho became the first African country to legalize cannabis farming for medicinal use, creating a whole new industry for the tiny southern African country. Ponseng Mahane moved from the capital Maseru back into her home village here in the Lesotho Highlands to work for the company MG Health. She never dreamed that she would one day grow cannabis for a living. First time I heard about it, I, I couldn't believe that this thing can come here at our village at Maraka Bay. But it happened. It is here. It is alive. And there is no need of us to go outside our village and look for some jobs. Lesotho has ideal growing conditions for cannabis. But MG Health is still the only company that exports medical-grade cannabis from the country. Because it is used in the pharmaceutical industry, the production requirements are extremely high. Over the past five years, MG Health has invested over 34 million euros in greenhouses, irrigation systems and skills training. Now the company has set its sights on expansion. We employ over 280 people. These are young people. Uh, very smart people that were never able to find jobs. And yeah, today, you know, we, we're exporting into Poland, Germany, shortly into the, into the UK. But this isn't good news for everyone. With cannabis set to become a major cash crop for big business, smallholder growers around the country are now abandoning the plants they once grew for the black market in South Africa. Tekisu Kamoli is the only cannabis farmer left in his village. Police raids and price competition from Swaziland have made it almost impossible to maintain his crop. For him, things were much better before the legislation kicked in. In my village, every household used to have a field of cannabis. It was all full here, and that's how people made a living. People didn't even bother to grow maize, Parents could send their children to school because of cannabis. Tekiso Kamoli works with his young neighbor Tabo for Loko. Together, they dry and deseed the buds before smuggling them over the border. For Loko, sees no way to make his business legal. Licenses to grow cannabis cost around 32,000 euros, way out of range for smallholder growers who are frequently targeted by the police. I feel very disappointed. Things didn't work out the way they said they would. We thought we'd be able to grow cannabis legally, but I can't buy a license. It's frustrating. I think there should be some form of support, like a corporation where someone could train us and help us secure a license. Then we all put together funds. That could help us start our business from the ground. After a long day trimming cannabis plants, Mahane is ready to wrap up her shift. Two years ago, she quit her job in a clothing factory in Maseru, where she sewed jeans for 12 hours a day, six days a week. In the greenhouse, the working conditions are much better and she earns twice as much as she used to. Cannabis has quite literally changed her life, just like the patients who will eventually benefit from her work. I believe cannabis has a bright future in Lesotho. When I started working in the greenhouse, they told me we make drugs for sick people. People need medicine, so they need this cannabis. For generations, cannabis farming was frowned upon or even punished with jail time. Lesotho has liberated this once closed space for big business. But smallholder growers like Foloko and Kamoli are left empty handed. In this evolving sector, it seems they are still winners and losers.